Yeah, I've been looking forward to this space all day. I'm ready for some high quality alpha. Uh, I like your enthusiasm. This, uh, just because of this Jedi thing, and uh, obviously there's been hype on the P die for a while. Um, but I've been learning about it and it's, it's cool in a lot of ways. Um, I actually think it's a lot of people are, uh, agree on, um, some of the fundamentals. So it's kind of a way to like unite some of these projects. Um, I was always very skeptical on the whole idea of pegging P die or, you know, what even is the point, you know? Um, but that's kind of beside the point now for me. Um, I really feel like it's it's the great uniter, and if we all unite on it, um, it can go well, go well past a dollar, you know. So um, it's not really about pegging for me. It could be about pegging for somebody else. No big deal. But I I do kind of find myself liking the whole idea now, um, and us joining that. You know, there's a lot of other communities that are kind of doing things that help um, the PDI thing um, work. And that's basically what the Pulsalorian is now doing. You know, it's going to buy, um, uh, create a system that buys PDI. Um, some of that will go towards wallets and accelerators and all the stuff that never sells. So it's um, we're contributing just like a lot of these other projects are um, contributing. So I, I like that philosophy of it. But everybody can find their own own reasons. But that's kind of the beauty of it is there's lots of different reasons. And um, find your own. Yeah, um, very good points, uh, Amr. Um, and if anybody wants to speak, feel free to raise your hand. I'll, I'll invite you as a speaker. But I, I was, I was going to say I, I pretty much had the same stance. Uh, pretty skeptical at the beginning at the beginning and uh but it's it's almost like you know in crypto like everything is kind of has a narrative right and it's always the most weird and improbable narrative that wins you know kind of like we see dogecoin as, as you know one of the most uh most one of the biggest cryptocurrencies endorsed by you know the world's most influential man so i wouldn't doubt you know p die does something crazy and it actually even surpasses a dollar you know uh, <clears throat> and there's nothing really holding it it's just all like market driven and you see people that were initially also not as as um uh, uh believing you know it could do some sort of pegging and then you see influences like sony right now recently you know starting uh <clears throat> post about pdi and then and the pegging and we're also joining forces right doing our part uh because you know it just seems like that's what the market wants um and uh, it's going to be a great way to onboard a lot of people into the post line ecosystem because pdi community is super strong it's super big there's a lot of volume there's a lot of transactions um and uh you know giving giving that community a tool, you know, uh, basically free money, free airdrops, a tool to earn P by passively and contribute to the ecosystem in a way that's just, you know, it's a positive, net positive force uh, behind it. <clears throat> I think that's, that's really good. Uh, it's just going to bring more people in. And we'll, we'll keep doing that and expanding into other communities as well, you know, just building Pulse Chain together, uh, as we believe it should be, but, you know. <clears throat> yeah, Pulse Orient. Yeah, I totally uh, agree with everything sorry, that you're saying. Are you saying. speaking, Derek, or not? It, yep, I am. Can you hear me? Because if so, I, I cannot hear you. Okay, one second. I can't seem to hear you too, Armour. Maybe it's me. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, I can hear you. Okay, got it. I can hear you now. Okay, that's good. <clears throat> I want to step back and um, tell some people um, about what 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 is going on with with Jedi and what is it and um, what's the Pulsalorian plan. 
um, take a step back now that there's some people in here and uh, kind of give us some more basic info if you feel like it. Yep, definitely, definitely. That's a very, very good point. Um, so we'll start with the basics, right? Um, because, you know, even even though there's always core, uh, you know, guild members here, uh, there's always new people dropping in to these spaces. There's also people who listen to the recording later on. So it's good to start with the basics, even though we might be repeating ourselves a little bit for, you know, people that are already familiar. But... So, <clears throat> GDA is uh, our next launch, which is launching tomorrow morning, CST time. Uh, I believe uh, around uh, 9.30 a.m. CST, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, the, it's, the announcement is posted on our Telegram. And uh, it's going to be a token that will basically yield you PDI, right? Which is has a tremendous, tremendously strong community on Pulse Chain, tremendously, tremendously strong narrative, you know, you have Sami shilling it, you have Brute shilling it, you have Ian shilling it. It's just, it's just you, you know, we see PDI and it's narrative everywhere. Um, and people who joined in early, they're already in very, very good profit on PDI. So you'll basically have a token that will yield you PDI uh, based on a buy and sell fee, right? And you don't have to do anything to earn uh, the PDI but to hold the token. Um, and there's for people who are obviously, you know, not familiar with the post learning ecosystem, you don't even need to connect to our site. You know, you can set up a clean wallet and start getting those earnings and tracking those earnings. But obviously, if, you, if, you, if you're comfortable, connect to the website and you have a way better way to track your PDI earnings. But you basically can earn PDI <clears throat> either by just holding the token and uh, rewards get automatically deposited into your wallet uh, every hour to a few hours. That's how the contract works. And uh, if you add liquidity um, with uh, GDI and PLS on Pulsex V2, and you just hold that liquidity, you'll earn actually two times uh, these PDI rewards. And one important thing to note is that you must hold at least one token liquid in your wallet, if you're doing the LP, uh, uh, the LP edition, to uh, to earn these rewards, just just because that's the way our contract uh, references to which wallets uh, it needs to distribute rewards, right? So it needs to at least have one token liquid, <clears throat> and then so you have these very easy ways to basically yield P die is just either hold or add LP. We'll probably add some sort of yield farming as well for Jedi holders where they can have other ways to earn, possibly not PDI, but then they can earn Elixir, um, which is another post token. token. And, uh, <clears throat> and the token itself has a very interesting uh, tokenomics, just like every, every, every one of our tokens. It's a limit, limited supply of Jedi, only a billion tokens. Uh, there's... Um, it's deflationary by nature. There's a burn on transactions. So your share of these rewards will, assuming you maintain your position holding or you maintain your LP position, right? As people trade, as there's demand for these tokens, uh, there's always going to be less and less and less shares in the market uh, for obtaining these PDI rewards. So assuming you're holding your position, which is, you know, promoting good investment behavior, you know, the delaying gratification, providing liquidity, you're, you're basically, over time, you're going to have a bigger and bigger share of these PDI rewards, right? Uh, and obviously, over time, uh, you know, it's also <clears throat> assuming, you know, the cost of demand that will also have uh, an in increase in price of a uh, JEDI token, right? Uh, not only that, uh, the contract also features... Uh, another protocol that works on top of it, which is our accelerated protocol, which <clears throat> all it does is basically it acts as a benevolent whale. It's just like a contract that holds some G die, which will continuously accrue P die, right? Uh, just like any other holder, <clears throat> except it's uh, programmed to once it reaches a threshold of P die to either buy more G die or 
uh, or add more GDI liquidity, right? So, and we'll, it will never basically sell, never remove the liquidity. So it's constantly going to be sucking GDI supply out of the market, constantly injecting more liquidity into the protocol and uh, making your GDI shares even more valuable, right? So promoting uh, positive buy pressure on the token. And, um, and we've seen uh, this contract at work right throughout all of our tokens, which, you know, could basically not only earn PDI, but you can earn HEX, PLS, PLSX, Inc, HOA. Uh, we uh, recently did one with uh, P Pepe because there was a demand for it. And, um, and uh, so, so we're, it's very exciting. And uh, one exciting thing is that there's going to be a huge... Uh, percentage of the supply basically airdropped to, to people, uh, especially PDI community members, uh, guild members. Um, so <clears throat> it's basically free money that's going to yield you PDI, which has a very strong narrative. So, so yeah, very, very exciting uh, times ahead. Um, if anybody has uh, any particular questions, I also want to invite them to speak. Um, and uh, yeah, Derek, go for it. Uh, you just feel free to raise your hand. Anybody who wants to speak, and I'll, 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 I know Lucas likes to speak, so I'll invite him as well. Okay, Mike Chet, can there. you hear me? Can you hear me? Honor, can you hear Derek? Or I might have to uh, drop and come back. I can't hear him. Uh, Yeah, you might have to drop and come back. Yeah, drop drop and come back, uh, Derek. Oh, I think you did. I think you might have to. Oh, but if I do, I'll rug the space, won't I? Uh, you just got to do it quick, but it's up to you. Uh, okay, I can, I can try. Um, you, got, you got 59 seconds to do it, I think is okay. the deal. Okay, I'll, I'll do that, and uh, I can I can hear you. If, if I rock the space accidentally, just let you know, guys. I'll just post another one, like, and you guys can all join uh, right after, so just in case it's rock. But I'll, I'll I'll join and I'll come back. Oh wait, can you guys hear me now? I can hear you. Okay, it's something funky going over my AirPods, so I just turned them off. So sorry about that. Well, I could hear you the whole time, so that wasn't the problem. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, I, I wasn't for sure. So I just turned my AirPods off anyway, but at least uh, someone can hear me. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm back. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, close can you, okay. yeah I can hear you now, Derek. Awesome. Okay, yeah, I just took my AirPods out just in case that was the issue, but it wasn't. So um, I had two things I wanted to say. So um, First off, as a continuation from the last space that I was in, um, it's so funny because at the time of that space, I had literally just gotten into G because it had just dropped like a day or two prior to that space. And then I had taken a small position into Caviar as well. So those are my only two positions at that point in time. But since then... I've gotten into Reflux, Vortex, Ink X, and um, even more exciting, this was very much unplanned, but I have to give kudos to you guys with that Mojo launch. Like, I was not planning <laughs> on being in that one, but when I saw it initially, I'm like, well, why the hell not? I might as well just get into it because it's just another fresh launch in the post Lorian ecosystem that is going to just generate more passive income for me. And to add to that, I never, you know, got into the Pepe coin on Ethereum. So um, the point I wanted to make was the timing of that Mojo launch was so clutch because I had also read a post about how if you were looking at the Pulse Chain Pepe chart on both daily and weekly timeframes, it was, or I should say, it is in a position now where it's just set to take off. Because if you just look at how long it's been going sideways, I'm like, oh my gosh, this was like the perfect time for Mojo to be launched and for us to just already start reaping the passive income on Pepe. So that was 
a job well done on that Mojo launch, and I'm so glad that I got into that uh, yesterday. And um, just overall, I'm just really excited about the um, GDI launch tomorrow. Like, I'm looking forward to it first thing tomorrow morning. And I'm also just super excited for the additional um, products that um, Pulse Lorian will be coming out with in due time. And as we continue to be in these passive income streams, they're just all going to build on top of each other, just generating more and more and more passive income, all while Pulse Chain itself is going to be going up in value and everything else is going to be going up in value. So I... Like, if you would have asked me, like, what all this was two weeks ago, like, I would have had not a single clue. Like, I'm that new to this ecosystem. And because of that, I'm just so thankful and grateful once again to be a part of this because you guys are really doing amazing stuff. You guys are building with impulse change just to make it even better. And I'm just so excited to see where all of this is going to be at in the next year or two from now and even beyond that. So again, just thank you all so much for having me. And I'm just, I'm, I'm just excited right now. We're happy you found us. That yeah. Was great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Derek, uh, for your, uh, yeah, for, for all your words and all your enthusiasm and everything you pointed out. I was just going to add a, a quick note uh, for for everybody, and that's just my my personal take, personal opinion of this ecosystem that's that's getting built. You know, every time uh, we airdrop some tokens or or do another yield token, uh, some people might think, oh, it's detracting from you know, let's say reflux or vortex, but but it's actually not. It's it's actually getting more people. On board is getting more exposure, more eyes into our ecosystem. It's bridging uh, the gap between uh, different communities, um, <clears throat> and it's 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 creating a stronger uh, network of uh, liquidity pool pairs, right? Um, and the idea is, you know, with with every new addition, uh, it just strengthens the entire uh, ecosystem of uh, post learning. I I uh, I see Brandon is on on the chat. And uh, we, uh, if he wants to speak about anything or speak about Texan, uh, definitely feel free to speak. Brendan is, is um, from, you know, everybody probably knows him. So no, no introduction needed, uh, but founder of uh, Texan community. And uh, we reached, recently launched uh, RGX, right, Ranger X, to support uh, the Texan community. And um, because, you know, this project's amazing. And uh, we all want some yield in Texan token, of course, right? Um, so feel free to speak. Yeah, man. Uh, I don't want to steal uh, your thunder here. I just wanted to, to hop in, and I forgot to click anonymous. <laughs> but I like listening to Twitter spaces. Um, yeah, so RGX, uh, RGX launched this past week. Uh, we've had tremendous amounts of positive feedback from the community. Lots of people kind of forget that they have Texan um, until they see a, a new token pop into their wallet because they're the staking class, and you guys airdrop to the staking class. So it's been good. It's it's really drummed up more interest. Uh, you know, it, it enhances and supplements what Texan already brings to the table. And uh, you know, what what does it bring to the table? Well, obviously, Texan is a is a yield bearing asset. And, uh, and also it just kind of brings, it brings more attention to Texan and it, and it makes it, I guess, uh, maybe like a higher level of social proof amongst everybody in Pulse Chain. So, you know, I do encourage as well, you know, anybody who wants to build on top of Texan, uh, Texan's an apex asset and, uh, it's, it's really, really, it's a really, really powerful tool to be able to create wealth over the long run. So, uh, shout out to Pulse Valorian for just enhancing that, and um, and thank you for enhancing Pulse Chain and being honest and, and straightforward. And uh, any community uh, should be pretty happy to to have those guys uh, backing them up. So thank you. Awesome! Uh, really, really, really uh, appreciate all 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 that you said, uh, Brendan, and all that you're doing for Pulse Chain, right? 
so we definitely want to partner with you know any protocol, any community that you know represents the true values of pulse chain cryptocurrency, true DeFi, and that's that's basically our mission uh, here, right on pulse chain. It's just put out like good, safe code, you know, that actually brings something to the table, actually add, adds value, can actually bridge communities, support the entire ecosystem, you know, that becomes a, a net positive, right? So <clears throat> again, for just, just in case somebody hops in this Twitter space and is not familiar with our ecosystem, so I'll just, just add uh, these few words, is that, you know, all of our contracts, they're verified, you can uh, check, uh, you know, our code on the scanner, um, and uh, and uh, so our code is public. Uh, we've seen uh, even people try forking our code, and uh, and all of codes, all of our code is also admin key free, meaning it's completely decentralized. We have uh, no control over these protocols, except for some minor uh, admin functions that really uh, pose no risk is maybe we can on on these protocols just uh change the tax a little bit from like one percent to two percent or three percent to two percent and that's that's pretty much pretty much it and but by contract design it's limited to a max of uh five percent right so so this it's to never raise the tax more than uh five percent so um so yeah so admin key free stuff uh, decentralized, uh, transparent code, and uh, you know we've been building here from from day one. And uh, I don't think there's many protocols out there that offer like so many ecosystems. You know, so many alternatives to earn trustless yield. You know, and and pretty much the favorite tokens in the ecosystem, right? PLS, PLSX, Texan, Hex, um, PDI. Now with our impending launch tomorrow, and uh, <clears throat> It, that, that's what we're trying to do here, uh, basically our mission on Pulsion. Uh, foster um, a bridge between communities, be a net positive, transparent uh, community with good code, right? Uh, our code is an innovation on, on uh, Pulsion. We, we were the first uh, contract, uh, you know, there's a lot of stigma with reflection contracts, uh, and this been discussed plenty of times, um, but we actually refer to our contracts as yield uh, tokens um, because you know we were the first uh, ecosystem to introduce introduce uh, a manner to reward uh, people to provide a liquidity right into these protocols, and they earn two times the amount of rewards if they provide liquidity, and that's what really solidifies. Um, the strength of the protocol, right, of increasing the liquidity and um, the, the share mechanism that we use within these contracts, uh, they incentivize you to also remain with your liquidity position, right? Uh, because if you take it off, then you lose that uh, share rate uh, and it's going to be hard to, to get that same amount of shares in those yield-bearing assets. Um, so, any, 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 uh, I don't know, I don't know if you want to say some words, Derek, if you want to say some more words, or even Brandon, uh, I just don't want to ramble, like, you know, too much, so I want to make this uh, as much interactive as possible, and just give as much opportunity as possible for anybody to speak, and even if it's, like, third-party projects or anything not related to post too, you know, it's just a post-chain space in, in the end of the day. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I know you've already gone over this. What's the deal with uh, the uh, what is it? Jedi tomorrow. Jedi? Yeah. So yeah, Jedi uh, launch tomorrow. It should be around you know nine thirty a.m. CST. Uh, it's going to be uh, a massive airdrop to the guild. Uh, there's there's been posts on our Telegram regarding uh, all of uh, all of. Um, all of the details in terms of like allocation and then if you hop on the website as well actually let me let, let me hop on real quick and then and then you i can read it off to people uh but yeah if you hop onto the to our home page there should be a button with uh and you, you go up to your product section should be a button for gdi 
And the way it will work is going to be a 1 billion fixed supply, right? These contracts will have a burn, a 0.5% burn on buy and sell. So it's going to be increasingly deflationary. So if you hold your position, if you hold your liquidity, if you hold the tokens in your wallets over time, you'll have greater and greater amount of shares uh, in the ecosystem uh, to earn these PDI rewards, right? If you if you manage to delay gratifications, what we propose, right? And then there's a 1.5% fee uh, on, on the buy that rewards people on PDI, and then 4.5% fee are rewarded in PDI on, on the sell transaction, right? So we want to we want to penalize the sellers, right? The people who can't hold, the people who could cheat and bring the price down. So we want to take a higher fee uh, from those guys and reward the true holders. And one other important thing to keep in mind, the mechanism behind of contracts is that, you know, when these, this conversion happens of GDI for PDI, it, it happens that the contract front runs the sellers, right? So it obtains the best uh, price uh, for the holders, so it's getting the best rate of PDI for the holders, and um, it, the way it's done, it, it, it happens. The distribution of these rewards happen uh, from like every hour to few hours, um, and then if you want to see that reward kick in like a little bit faster, just do like a, a you know like a tiny transaction, and you'll probably see the reward kick in, um, and uh, you know distributes about like. 20 accounts at a time uh, at, on every sell transaction and it just you know loops through the entire uh, array of holders uh, you know one by one in a round robin fashion and uh, we'll most likely also be introducing uh, yield farming opportunities for GDI holders so possibly pairing it with PLSX so you have other ways to earn not only PDI but you could possibly earn Elixir which is our yield farming incentive token. So if you haven't checked out our farms as well, there's like amazing, it's amazing rates uh, that you could, you could get um, for ad, pro providing some liquidity there. And, um, and Elixir will be our, our governance token eventually, where you can uh, vote on new pools to be added to the farm, change reward allocations, and so forth. Obviously, uh, with these contracts, um, you know, there will be no admin keys, the liquidity will be burnt, um, and there will be a 40% supply uh, reserved uh, for the airdrops, right? And then 50% uh, of the supply will be in liquidity. So basically, 4% uh, will be in, in the accelerator, which only buys and adds LP and never sells. And then the remaining 6% is to a no expectation wallet. So basically the entire supply of this token will be out in the market, airdropped, uh, and then um, the rest will be in the liquidity and then a tiny portion in the accelerated. So there's no really, uh, no real way to really like dump this token. It's, there's going to be like, um, it's going to be interesting to see how this game theory of doing this airdrop will play out, right? Because it's free money, right? So a lot of people will want to sell and they'll cheat, you know, taking a tiny profit because they received a, a free airdrop. But a reminder for people who are adding liquidity early, because this is basically launching as well from zero and people are injecting liquidity into this protocol, you could secure like a really big position in, in this token that you do PDI, right? So <clears throat> you could lock in a really good share rate of your liquidity pr provision and basically you're earning all of the fees of the people who are cheating into the protocol. And then obviously tokens that are launching usually from the ground floor, they actually, they actually attract a lot of volume because they tend to pump really high. And, and that's all part of the game. And that's all part of the game theory. We want that a lot of that initial volatility to generate a lot of fees and you know just basically people earning free money is just attracts more people right so let's just a couple of points and go for it honor i think you were going to say something 
Oh, I was just going to give my typical rant that I've made a couple times, but since, uh, because um, there's also more tokenomics than just yielding. And so for like the Texan people, um, you know, if they wanted to use this more for their benefit, we have done this with Vortex is the token that, that yields the Texan or the Vortex. Um, we put some of the supply in places that can never sell it. So in the circumstance of Vortex, we have Groku that pays Vortex, similar to like the Ranger. So if you somehow get more supply into the accelerator, that accelerator will never sell your Texan, but it'll accumulate. And doing things like this put more buy pressure. And um, once we increase volume with liquidity webs and such, that I, th I feel like this is kind of the concept why a lot of people are coming to the Pulse Lorian, is they like what we do and they like the code. But they also are starting to see the, the buy pressure it gives to their token. And so we're, at least in my opinion, we need to really evaluate um, future projects because people are, are seeing that we're buying up their token. And maybe they don't even like what we're doing per se, but they like the fact that something's continuously buying their token. So I think like Ranger and Texan came in at a good time. Um, and if you guys treat it well and accept it well, um, it could do a lot for your token. But that's basically the mold we're trying to do for uh, Vortex with Groku. Um, and I feel like maybe some people are, are seeing the success of that. Um, so just just keep that in mind and and uh, you know there's things that um, the Texan community can do to make Ranger work even better for them um, and we can talk about that or whatever you guys want to do but I just wanted to make that that rant about what we're doing with Vortex and in my opinion it's working and we haven't even seen the full effects of it yet. Um, Ramard didn't really make it in the public chat but he told me how much Groku is actually tied up and is going to go towards buying Vortex. And uh, it would it would blow you away. Nobody owns enough. Uh, I'm just going to say that. Um, maybe he can make a comment on it somehow in a, in a more dev manner than me just um, spitting out euphoria. But um, it, it works. Um, so... If you want to reach out to him or Pulsalorian and figure out ways that you can make this Ranger work even better for you, there there's lots of ways, in my opinion. But you can take it from here. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, hi, my name's Jacob. Yeah, um, I'm just uh, catching the tail end of your chat. And, uh, yeah, I'm just uh, learning that it's uh, some kind of, uh, you know, interests or... Um, you know, uh, earning system for holding for longer. And you mentioned that you can use Texan. And I'm actually wondering if you can do that also with a token called Ophir, which is a fork of Texan. And that's spelled O-F-H-I-R. That's also on the Pulse chain. And that's a fork of Texan that uh, Matt, uh, Crypto Heartbeat, and uh, 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 Brandon and a gentleman by the name John uh, all work together to create. Just wondering about that. Oh, nice. I, I didn't know that. Um, uh, to be honest, I'm going to dig more into Ophia, but yeah, you said it's a fork of text, and so I, I suppose it's kind of like same features. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a possibility. Uh, the way we've been deploying these... Um, these yield bearing tokens it's basically by you know listening to the community uh demand you know and uh and people that reach out to us and uh but i'd say it's definitely a possibility right uh we uh we want to deploy as, as many as many yield bearing assets as possible i'd say in the long run right that's that will just strengthen the overall ecosystem of pulse chain you know it's just more trading happening it's more volume it's more opportunity for people to speculate 
And it's if if the code is legit, you know, if the code, the community behind it is transparent, if they represent the true values of Pulsing, DeFi, uh, etc., and uh, and there's a demand for it, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll surely be deploying uh, these tokens. Um, and it's and then it's and then at the end of the day, you know, it's up to the community, right? We our mission is just to publish good, safe, transparent code that supports the ecosystem as a whole, right? And actually gives some sort of unique value proposition, right? Which is what our contracts have. It's like you have an incentive for liquidity provision, you have an incentive for buy and burn, uh, continuously adding more liquidity, strengthening this LP network. So all, all of these factors, right? Um, and the more that we add to it is the more that's going to bridge in communities, uh, people, together within Pulse Chain, and it's just gonna help out the entire ecosystem. So your, your answer is yes, it just might need to, you know, some time to get to it, and just, I, I probably have to dig into it as well, because I'm not familiar. Yeah, that's awesome, it sounds really synergistic. Um, I was just wondering, uh, Brandon, is there any chance you could uh, just touch on the fact and confirm that uh, Ophir is a legit DeFi um, uh, fork of Texan? At all? Yeah, so very similar to you, Paul Solorian, where you're, you're kind of, uh, you're seeding different communities with your contract to help them out and help you out, help your whole web out. Uh, Ophir is, it's a community that we tokenize. Hold on, my cat's crazy. I need to, I need a Nerf gun to shoot him with, but I'm not going to do it. Hold on. Get out of here, cat. All right. So Ophir, um, Ophir's a community that we tokenized out of the Philippines. They've got a network of about 300, uh, 300 churches and up to a uh, 1,000 other organizations total. And they're working to onboard their entire community to Pulse Chain right now. So um, we launched that contract uh, in 2023. And, uh, you know, they're, they're growing and they're, they're moving. So if you have any questions about it, just give me, uh, give me a ring. Uh, we'll most definitely check out. Uh, uh, do you, what, what's the website for Ophir? Well, it's spelled uh, it's spelled O P H I R. Okay. And uh, it's ophircrypto.com. Ophir. Okay, got it. Yeah, definitely check it out later after the space. Pope Farmer is in the chat. You know, it's like you know, you know, pretty much you know, part of our team, uh, ambassador. You know, bizarre connections and, you know. So, yeah, if you want to add any words, Palmer, you know, you're the best speaker. So, um, I'm at uh, my, uh, my girl's parents' house just kind of listening and chilling. My phone's at 8%, so I probably won't be here long. But, yeah, I mean, you know, we're really just trying to, you know, support as many communities as we can. And... You know, our community, bit like the post community, we benefit from it. And we're also able to come out and help benefit other communities. You know, because we're sitting here, we're like, you know, the best way to grow our community is, like, let's be real here. How many chats, how many Telegram chats for different tokens is everybody in? And you get that one guy from one community that comes into your Telegram and starts showing his token. Right? Well... That person, his objective is to try to get people from that, whatever community that is, into their community, right? We're, we're kind of getting the, we're basically taking the same route or the same objective to grow adoption instead of like coming in and trying to poach people from communities. We're coming in and supporting that community. And then that community, you know, we're seeing people from the Texan community, the soon the PDI community. You know, obviously the Pulse X and all of them, the Pepe community, they're coming in and they're saying, you know, you gave me this for free. What do I, how can I learn about it? Right. So they're able to get educated because they just got something for free and they're showing interest. It's like the more honest way of like basically getting another community to learn about a different community. Right. And the, like the, with the way I look at it. Um, and it's, it's, it's working out positively. Um, because you can see, uh, I mean, Rags was looking at the Texan chart, and, and he was seeing the effect that uh, Ranger was having on it, right? And 
<coughs> you know, normally with yield tokens, you're you're required to um. Everybody looks at them and says, "Oh, that token they don't work because people come and go, and they you need to have constant volume for it to be able to you you, you need to have people." basically throwing themselves in the meat grinder for the token to be successful. That's not true. Uh, that's never been true. And we're proving that it's not true, right? Because when we had Reflux, right? Reflux had a strong launch, went to the moon, melted back down as it would have, as, you know, these things tend to go. And we noticed, hey, you know, we paired Reflux with Pulse, obviously. We paired it with Hex and Pulse X. And then, you know, once basically all the hype died down, and we were looking at it and we're like, this thing's still paying out, right? Because of the arbitrage box. Um, and so then we said, okay, let's fork it and have it, have it yield Pulse X. And then we did the same thing. We bonded it to Hex, Pulse X, Pulse. And then we started bonding it to Reflux. Well, then we, we noticed that the volume is hard to track. But you can see, you know, when you go to Deck Screener, you can see the makers. You can see how many wallets have interacted with either buying or selling the contract. Every time we release a new token and bond it with everything else that we, we've released, there we see that maker, like, basically the floor go up, right? Of more wallets interacting with each token on a daily basis, which means that it's working, right? So, at this point, we no longer need... I mean, as a, as if a few launches ago, we no longer need human interaction, right? Uh, we we no longer need a, pe people throwing themselves into the meat grinder for me and everybody else to be getting pulse, pulse X, hex, p hex, um, <laughs> die, text in everything put into our wallets on a daily basis. I could care less about how much it is. I just want to like, who doesn't want to be able to DCA into their token daily? That's how I look at this, right? And I'm acquiring all of my favorite tokens daily. And now I'm acquiring tokens that I don't even bother buying daily. Am I selling them? No, I'm, I'm just sitting on them and just be happy that my wallet's building, right? So, you know, we can't... We Instead of taking the approach of we're going to try to sell this to everybody and try to get them to see, right, through your standard memes, your, you know, the standard shilling, all of this stuff, we said... Look, this code's awesome. It's doing what it's supposed to do. There aren't any really there aren't any other yield tokens out there that are built like this. And we just need to show everybody. We need to show everybody what these tokens can do. What's the best way to do that? Fork it and make it yield something that they're already showing and that they love. Right? People in the tank gang are really happy with their pulse. They've been happy, you know. I, I've had a lot of people messaging me about how it works and all of that, and they're they're again, you know, to kind of bring it all around and full circle, they're they're interested in learning about the code. They're interested in learning about their tokens, right? Now, what they choose to do with that information is on them. You know, if they want to sell the bag, fine, whatever. You got free money. You're paying everybody else with the with the sell tax. You got it for free. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't care. I don't care. All I know is each one of those candles I look at on any one of these tokens, I knew I got paid, right? And <laughs> again, you know, everybody... Everybody wants to buy a token. They want to trade some pulse for whatever they're getting. And then they want that token to go up. So that way they, they can sell the token on their friends. And then, you know, walk off with however much pulse that they made. Okay, cool. Awesome. Awesome trade. As All I know is that as long as any of these tokens are going, whichever direction they're going, the ones that I got for free, right? The Texan, that I, the, the Ranger X that I got for free. I don't need, I can literally just ignore it for the rest of my life, and I'm yielding Texan, which is an asset I think is going to go to the moon. When it's going to happen, it's irrelevant to me, right? All I know is that the result of what we're doing is getting things that I think are actually going to go to the moon put into my wallet daily, right? So, <coughs> yeah, it's, it's working out. It's working out pretty well, you know, and yeah. we're, we're in a, uh, we're in an interesting, um, position to be able to support as many communities as we can right and the more communities that we support six months from now guys everybody's gonna know about us i mean people already pretty much do know about us at this point but everybody's gonna feel our effect in one way shape or form rather it's 
if they bought one of our tokens or they got it airdropped or they're looking at the chart and they're wondering why their token's getting bought up more than it was before, like, they're going to know our effect, right? So, yeah, go ahead, Paul. You know, I was just going to add to that and then I'll let Ruka speak because he's a speaker. I, I, I think he might have something to say. But I, I think, like, the focus, you know, just adding on to all that you said, I 100% agree with everything. Is just focusing on a macro picture, right? I think, as you said, a lot of people, they just want to buy a token, see their bags go up, and then sell the token and, you know, cash out some PLS. Great. But the way these tokens work is you don't ever have to sell them. It's a constant revenue stream of the best tokens in the market. And over time, it, it, this, this, the share in those tokens, you're sharing those tokens that you do, that amount of Pulse or PulseX or HOA, it just grows over time if you don't sell it, sell it or if you don't take out your liquidity. So, and what happens is, is you know, as there's also a ton of trading usually on day one, day two, day three, the first week. That usually just makes up for like, a, you know, an amazing yield by itself, just those three days. And then, you know, obviously the volume tends to stabilize after that. And the yield is less intense, but it's still yield that's just pouring in. And then the idea is that, you know, there's people that are going to get to a point with like pulse appreciating, our liquidity pools appreciating, uh, because they're all bonded with PLS. And there's no reason to actually ever have to sell these tokens, right? People will be, my idea at least is like, I don't want to be a trader. I just want to park my money there and have yield coming into my wallet so I can go live my life. Go do like things that I enjoy more i don't want to you know be uh you know constantly glued to a screen watching a chart uh, i know there's some people that get the dopamine hit out of it you know usually are people that are more novice to the market and stuff but i just want to see yield passive income because what, what what i can do with that yield is just buy more of the deflationary asset that produces that yield so it's basically people will be compounding their yield into the asset that gives them that yield, pushing up the asset price that is actually deflationary. And it's, got, it's always gonna exist less stuff. So we've been seeing that with Vortex. It's like, a, I think like a, one of the best examples, um, like Vortex itself, uh, there's only 6% approximately of the supply available in the market. So basically if you wanna be a whale in, in, in Vortex, like good luck. You're probably not going to be a whale unless you put like some serious amount of cash into Vortex, just pretty much pumping the price into the moon. And, uh, you know, the opportunity you have with uh, uh, tokens such as GDI, is, which is going to be airdropped and people will be GDing out, is a chance to get in from, from the ground floor, right? Securing, locking in a really good LP position, locking in a really good amount of GDI that's just going to yield you PDI. Uh, and as former said, you know, our liquidity pool network is growing and expanding. And with every launch, every community that comes in, that is, we're just farming our bots at this point, you know, um, yep. And, uh, and you, you know, like that's exactly what you said was right. Was we're, we're, we're farming our bots, you know, um, we're utilizing we're creating a bunch of pools, right? The community's creating a bunch of pools. We're pairing it to all sorts of stuff. And whenever the ratio gets, gets like, whenever the ratio of any of these tokens or any of the other tokens that aren't these tokens that it's paired with, Hex, Pulse, PulseX, PDI, whatever, you text and you name it. When, when all of those, like, ratios get thrown off, you know what that is? <laughs> That's an arbitrage opportunity. And you know who's going to take advantage of it? Somebody who's running a bot that's not even looking at their computer. And they don't care because they're making money, right? And we care because we're making money, right? Just like, like that's literally, like, liquidity providing. The reason, like, your liquidity provider fees, that's, they're meant to, um, they're meant to incentivize you to provide liquidity, right? And, and to also basically defend against permanent loss or whatever. But, like, those liquidity provider fees are coming from people trading or arbitrage bots trading, right? Like, you don't need, you don't, <laughs> we're creating, 
like basically like an insane amount of yield just in, in all sorts of these different tokens just because the price of our to of one of our tokens is different here than it is over there and every time that that happens which is 24 7 around the clock there's gonna be an algorithm that picks that up and corrects it every time right like i'm trying to avoid using the term guaranteed but it's somebody's not going to arm something right this is just not going to happen you know like everything's going to get armed everything's going to it, think about it like this <clears throat> you drop a pedal into a pool of water that is still okay you drop that pebble right into the middle what does it do it goes in, it goes plop and then you see all the waves come out and then you see the waves start settling down and then they start bouncing off each other and then it goes back to flat it goes back to calm water that's basically what arbitrage is, right? Somebody comes in, they move the price of something on one on PulseX, for example, and then somebody's got a program that's looking at all of everything else going around, and they say the price of reflux is this on PulseX and this V2 pool, and then it's a different price. <laughs> Obviously, just an example, it's this price over a nine millimeter, and. One's more expensive and one's cheaper. So they buy it from the cheaper and they sell it for the more. For the more expensive one, right? So, I don't know, man. Every time that I think about this and, like, every time I wake up, I go look at my wallet and it's like, it's like Pulse, Pulse X, Hex, P Hex, HOA, <laughs> Texan, Texan. Like, it's just over and over and over again. And I'm, like, again, I don't. I've never sold any of these tokens. I don't buy them so they go up. I buy them because they're yielding something that I know is going to perform well. Right? When, like, you know, it's like, <clears throat> like, let's say, let's say I earned 100,000 pulse today just from my reflux. Okay? And I think that pulse X is going to go, or I think that pulse is going to do 100X. Okay? Well, it's 100,000 Pulse right now, like what, like $10, something like that, $12? I think it's a little bit more yeah, because we're probably yeah, 14. Good. But, like, that $10, guys, is not going to stay $10. It didn't stay $10 months ago back in October. When, like, I'll give you all my personal example. I was into Reflex on day two, okay? Right before we ripped up to, like, crazy, right? Right before that huge rip. All right, I was sitting here looking at my wallet, and I was like, that's a lot of money, right? And then I sat here, and I looked, and I said, look at all this pulse that I'm yielding today at the bottom of a bear market when we're down 85% on pulse. And, and I just sat there, and I just kept letting the pulse come into my wallet. And a couple of weeks ago, <coughs> let's say I put, this, this isn't accurate, but let's say I put $3,000 into reflux on that day, Okay. I've already earned enough pulse that's paid me the dollar value of that $3,000 that I put in initially, right? Like I've yielded so much pulse and then that pulse tripled or doubled or whatever the fuck it did, right? From when it was down 85% to where it is now, it's appreciated to the point to where I can go. <laughs> it's worth way more than $3,000 now. And guess what? I've been getting paid all day, every day for literally months. The game in a bear market is to build and accumulate, okay? We're building and we're accumulating because we are bullish, right? We say pulse is going to go up, and that means that my yield is going to go up. My rewards are going to go up. When GDI launches and I start yielding PDI, I don't have to think that PDI is going to go to a dollar. All I know is that I got GDI... Because I fucked with the, with, uh, with the Pulse Lorian ecosystem, and I had I met the standards for the airdrop, I'm getting a free thing that's going to give me something that a whole bunch of people are going to do the work to show for me for to get it to a dollar. I don't have to worry about the price, price performance of PDI. Everything I'm getting is free at that point, right? With GDI and, and Ranger X and, and, money and rich. Caviar and Jeet. All of that shit I got for free. <laughs> All of that shit is paying me something that I value ex like a lot, right? So <laughs> it's about earning yield and it's about accumulating, right? Because not everybody's going to be able to get in. Hold on one sec. 
Yeah, I was just going to add to that. Um, like, for example, Reflux, we've seen, you know, it's been launched for a few months now, uh, maybe four months or so. And uh, we've seen it paid out already 600 million PLS2 holders, right? And all of our tokens pretty much launch from scratch. So that's that's the opportunity, like GDA is going to launch, right? It, it basically, you know, a couple hundred bucks, you can secure a really, really good position. So assuming you have like 1% of these shares in uh, Reflux, which were basically worthless, right? When it launched, because it's launched from scratch, you basically earn 6 million pulse, you know? that already went into your wallet and then you can see you know a lot of wallets earning you know earn millions and millions and guess how much that post will be worth in the future you know we are all expecting you know an easy 10x from here you know and then could be could be way 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 more Go, sorry for my look us at the oh, and I'm coming back I gotta, I gotta start the car up. Yeah, in my phone. But, yeah, you know, like... We, we're not having to do the shilling for the tokens we're not... We're yielding anymore, right? Like, I mean, with the core tokens, right? The pulses, the pulse X's, the hexes, the incentives. And I haven't even talked about incentive X yet. I'll get to that in a second. But all of those tokens are... <laughs> we're all shilling them, right? Like, but when you're talking about sub communities, okay, you're gonna have people that don't shill Texan. You're gonna have people that do shill Texan, right? And by us coming in and supporting different crypto communities within our ecosystem as a whole, within the Pulse Chain ecosystem, we are benefiting from all of all of their like diamond handedness, right? We're all benefiting from it, and we're supporting them, right? We're supporting their charts. We're supporting them. So what the... We call it a guild for the re, for a reason. Okay? Look up the definition of a guild. A definition of a guild is a whole bunch of people from all walks of life that are working towards the same goal. Okay? That's, that's what we're doing. Right? And we don't have to just... Like, when we support other people, other people support us. And that's what's happening. And that's what's working. Now, I'm going to talk about Incentive X. Because Incentive X is <clears throat> my $500 bag on day one of that token launching when I bought $500 worth of it <laughs> paid me like like five times more or something in incentive than my $10,000 liquidity position did on the farms. That's crazy. Like that's completely insane. Right? So now those people who are farming incentive, they're using all their all their money to farm up incentive in the farms that are dumping their bags, we're we're getting them deposited into our wallets for basically free at this point, right? You do have to incentive wasn't a I don't think it got airdropped. So we had to we all had to go buy it, but and, and we don't have to like, click anything, right? It just pours in. Like the yeah. guy who, who's farming yeah. it on full sex, he still needs to go like stake, uh, like harvest convert, etc. And permanent loss. All of that. You know? So, you know, we are we already have a big list of communities. Um, I brought up a couple a couple of tokens to support the Tang Gang, because I know I'm leaning in heavily into the Tang Gang. I consider myself a part of that community, too. Uh, the, the, the big names in that community have taught me a lot. And so I wanted to give back to them, and that's why I made Pulp, cause to support them. Or that's why Ron Bird made Pulp for my, for me, right? Like, I'm the founder of that token, but he's he's the genius behind all of this and the code. And I didn't write the code. I didn't edit the code. He did all of that. But everybody in the, in the tank gang is happy, right? And <coughs> that's all I want to see, you know? They weren't getting oranges for free, and then they were. Right? I wasn't getting Pepe for free. Now I am. I wasn't getting Hex. Now I am. I wasn't getting E-Hex. Now I am. Right? And the way that we bring this back to the to our core tokens and what our core tokens are are the BSKRs, the uh, the Darth Woe Jacks are meme tokens, Reflux and uh, Incentivex, 
uh, Vortex, those are all like the core tokens of the of the Pulsalorian ecosystem. Pulsalorian and Rob Murd are the founders of those tokens. They are they are the ones that take full responsibility for it. So when we say, you know, for two weeks we say, hey, here's a long list of tokens. You got to have a million reflux to get the drop of Jedi or whatever. I thought I was just getting a drop of Jedi. I've gotten three drops or two drops, and now I'm getting another drop of Jedi in a, in a couple days. So, like, you know, that you we, we support loyalty. If you're here and you're loyal to us, you get rewarded, right? And and just like how, um, and of course, it's no, no guarantee, right? Um, but that's, that's our goal is to support people who support us. And that's what it's all about, you know, because we're helping – we're building our community by supporting other communities, not poaching them, right? There's a difference. So, when, you know, there's people in this chat right now that I've never, like, I haven't seen before that, that are from different communities, and they talk about other tokens, and they're very avid about their tokens, and that's perfectly fine. We're going to come in, we're, we're going to support you, right? And then you'll show interest in what we got going on. Maybe you'll join the guild. Maybe you won't. I don't care. I don't care what you do with your money. Just like how we can't make you do anything with your money, you can't make us do what we want to with ours. Which means you can't stop us from supporting y'all. Right? Nobody can stop us from airdropping shit to everybody else. Right? Whether they like it or not, if they don't like it, go ahead and cheat the bag and sell it. Because it's got the 5% tax. You're going to be the one that's paying everybody else. And then you're not going to keep getting free money. So, yeah. I think I think what, we've done, what we're doing here isn't something that I've really ever seen. Because normally communities get built and then you get the cultists right and it's it's this token or nothing and blah 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 we all know how it goes right and you know when you're talking about people's money people we know how this goes right we know how people are when they're talking about their tokens i'm not interested in trying to get people to <clears throat> hey your token shit you should come buy this token forget all of that forget that we're going to go pick communities, and we're going to pick the most diamond-handed class of those communities, the ones that believe in it, the cultists, and we're going to support them. We're going to, we're going to say, here you go. You can do what you want to with it, right? And it's working. It's working really well. Go ahead. I, I'm, I'm done with that rant. No, awesome. Amazing words, uh, Foreman. Um, Lucas, uh, anybody else wants to speak in the chat? I see Big Bear. Awesome to have you here, Big Bear. Uh one of our OG Sally's uh, giving us great wisdom uh, behind the scenes. And um, so, yeah, if anybody wants to speak, uh, feel free to raise uh, raise your hand. We'll invite you as a speaker. Uh, obviously, this is open space. It's about pulse chain. So, yeah, Lucas, uh, if you want to speak, feel free. Sure. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, uh, now I'm really excited about Jedi coming out uh, tomorrow, and uh, one thing I would love to see in the future after Jedi, <laughs> you know, I'm, uh, you know, I jumped into Reflux when it first came out, and I'm, I'm a Reflux maxi in this little community, I talk about Reflux all the time, so I would love to see, like, a great Goku-style coin, you know, to do the same thing that it does for Vortex for, for Reflux. I think that would be awesome. It will come. It but. will come, man. Don't worry. <laughs> it's, it's, it's on the pipeline. It for sure will come. I guarantee you. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Because, you know, like you were saying earlier about LPs. I, I actually... You know, I'll, I'll, I just started to interrupt, but I actually have... Even, no, I actually even have a, an, a UI ready for it. It's just that we didn't get a chance to deploy it. Just so you know that it's really coming. Nice. No, I believe it. No, that's awesome. Because, uh, you know, like you were saying earlier about LPs, you know, I was fortunate enough, like Pope Former said, to get into Reflux, what, on day two or three. And I started an LP right away. And it's insane, you know, the difference between getting an LP, like you said, holding your position. For, holding my position for this long is awesome. Even on slow days, you know, those R bots really do help you earn yield. And, I mean, I will, I will not exit my LP position for anything. I don't give a shit what anybody says. You know, like, I know some people like to pull their, L, their liquid, you know, their LPs and then put them back and all that crap. No, I, I like keeping it where it's at. I like what I'm earning just from holding. I've had that, you know, I, you know, two different LPs for a long time. 
that are working perfectly. So, you know, I like that model. It's working across the board. I think it's a it's a great model to incentivize, you know, added liquidity. I know we've discussed it numerous times, but there are a lot of new faces in here, and it's just like it's it's a very good model to keep the community self sufficient, especially with these R bots. So, yeah, I mean, looking forward to Jedi. I mean, I, I, I the the PDI narrative is awesome. So, you know, I I, I used to dabble. You know, I, I had a, a nice bag of PDI for a while, and I, I sold the, the top the, the former top of it and uh, got into a lot of other projects with with some of my earnings, and one of them was actually Reflux. <laughs> so, you know, that token I do like. I like the narrative around it. I like the idea, you know, people talking about, you know, the community that's been built up around that particular token. Will it pay? Will it not? Who knows? But it's an awesome speculative asset to uh, add to the collection that we already have. So, yeah, looking forward to it. I'm going to step down for a little bit. I got to drive home and I know I'm going to lose service. So I'll be back. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, awesome. Thank you, Rickus, and thank you, former. Um, I, I'll go go next, Big Bear, and then Derek. Uh, let let Big Bear first because he hasn't spoken yet. Hey, what's up, Guild? Can you hear me okay? Yep, loud and clear. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah, uh, that great comments by Rufus there. Um, you know, I'm I'm kind of in the same boat as him. I, I found I found the Pulsarian Guild uh, when RFX uh, was about to be about to be launched and, and came into existence. Um, I love the philosophy about being able to earn an L1 token as a reward. Um, you know, so for me, it was, it was basically looking at at getting into Ethereum in like 2016 before Ethereum became a thing, right? So that was a, a huge, a huge draw for me. Um, and... I, I've seen the way the ecosystem has evolved since I became involved in the guild. Look at the team is solid. The, the the code is is I mean the reason the core just the, the code just keeps getting forked over and over and over again is because it is solid. It works. It's tried and true. Um, and I, and I love the fact that they're covering all the bases and that they're reaching out to other communities. Um, because, you know, once you start cross pollinating, I mean, cross pollinating is, is a, a thing that happens in, in life, right? Plants and, and everything, everything gets cross pollinated and they flourish as of a, a, a sort of, that's the result of, of cross pollination. So for me, the way the guild is cross pollinating between communities is is a huge plus. I love what they're doing. Um, I think it's a great concept, and um, yeah, I mean, the the code speaks for itself. It is what it is. Um, you know, I, I posted earlier in, in one of the chats about you know once once the the LP architecture is done, this will literally be not one, but multitude of protocols that will continue to thr uh, uh, flourish and survive in the blockchain for infinity, simply because the R bots will continue to do what they do on a day-by-day -day basis. They will arbitrage the price between multiple pools and continue to provide volume for all these protocols without any human intervention. So that means nobody buying, nobody selling. There will always be volume. And what volume produces, produces yield. So we're all in a really good spot right now. That's all I can say. Awesome. Uh, amazing words. And, uh, and uh, just, um, you know, just um, feedback for, for the rest of the people listening. Like, uh, Big Bear, he's not your average, you know, crypto investor. He's like, Extremely a savvy, experienced uh, person when it comes to investments. You know, he's he, he's been around. You know, so uh, getting getting like this type of feedback from him, uh, it's it it legitimizes us that we are on the right track, doing the right thing. So yeah, go for it, Derek. Uh, yeah. So um what i was going to mention next was um obviously i'm very much excited for the um 
the GDI launch tomorrow, and um, I wanted to piggyback off of what else was being said about doing a Groku style type of um, release or launch um, for Reflux because, I mean, let's face it, like we can never have too much pulse chain for sure. And so since I got into Reflux a lot later than most, I didn't get in or I shouldn't say I didn't know about it when it first came out. So, you know, having that type of um, launch to yield more reflux, which then gives you even more pulse, like that would be an amazing opportunity to build upon. And as I mentioned before, I'm just really looking forward to like what else is going to be coming out in the post Solorian um, ecosystem. Like this is this is very much the early stage. Like we're not even in a full fledged bull run yet, so it's just all about delayed gratification, planting your seeds early, and then once the bull run really gets up and turning, then that's when the real fun is going to start. So I'm just having a really exciting time just planting all these seeds. And like I said, I didn't even know or think that it would be possible to have all these passive income streams building on top of each other. But at the end of the day, we're all helping each other. We're all supporting each other. And we're just all going to win together. That's really what it's all about. And I'm just grateful to be here with all you, with all of you tonight. Like, this is a very great space to be in. Awesome. Yeah, exactly, Derek. Um, yeah, for sure, the Reflex One style Goku type of token, it, it, it's coming. And, um, yeah, uh, like, uh, as I said, you know, also, our ecosystem is not just, you know, the EO tokens alone. Uh, there's uh, other opportunities within the ecosystem itself. You know, we have the yield farming. I think people, a lot of people overlook the, our yield farms. Um, I mean, you can earn, at the moment, 80% APR on PLS, PLS X V2, V2 pair. Uh, so that, that, that speaks for itself. So there's plenty of, like, different pools. Um, the, you know, yielding upwards of 200, 300% APR currently uh, because our farm is still, um, still it's in, in its infancy. You know, we're, we're a growing protocol. And uh, I'll probably have some more farms added tonight. Uh, so by the end of the night, that's my plan to add uh, maybe three more, three different pools to that will have like some really juicy APR for the first people that join. And, uh, you know, just gives more opportunities. And the, the thing also to keep in mind, like uh, our farms work, work uh, supporting the whole ecosystem, right? Because the fees that we farm from these farms will be putting it back into liquidity, you know, strengthening this uh, LP network that we have. Go, go for it, uh, Lucas. I believe I had uh, interrupted you. Go for it. Oh, no, yeah. Sorry, I got a screaming baby in the background. <laughs> I didn't want to annoy everybody. <laughs> so I was just trying to calm her down, and then uh, I'll chime back in. I'll yeah. chime in for a second there. I'll Wait, chime in for a second there, Richard Fajari. Yeah, I mean, what, what you said was so on point because, you know, for a long time, I was so focused on the protocols and, and ignored the farms. But once I got what was going on in the farms is, is kind of when the light bulb moment went on for me. I mean, this is probably, <laughs> I'm probably giving away a little bit of alpha here and it's going to cost me. But if you, if you go into the, the, if you go into Pulse X and you go and start looking at the, at the yield that the pools are producing on V2 and you compare that to what the pools are produced, the same pools are producing on, on, the, the Pulse Lorian farm, it's a no-brainer between where you want to be, okay? And if you're a long-term holder and you believe in what these guys are doing, which, which I do wholeheartedly, if I can get 5 to 10% more APR in the farm than I'm getting on Pulse XV2, my tokens are going into the farm. And 
the fact that they have the elixir token set up to become the governance token of the Pulsalorian ecosystem, which is coming, they're working on it, the UI is coming, they're, they're developing it, it it's going to be there. Um, for me, just the yield alone, the difference in the, you know, the upside in the yield is, is a huge pull. So I'll have, I'll happily transport my, my, my tokens. I'll stake it either way, V2, Pulse, Pulse X V2 or, or in the farm, depending on which yielding, which is yielding me more for the Elixir tokens. Um, but the fact that they're, they're also developing out the Pulse Lorian ecosystem to, to, to make the Elixir token a DAO governance token is i mean that's huge man so you know i think a lot of people are sleeping on the farms right now there there's definitely a lot of upside to being on the farms um there's also a lot, a lot of upside to being in the in the v2 pools you just have to learn how to how to sort of navigate them and really keep an eye out for where your money's being treated best so i'll leave it at that see i knew there was some super heavy alpha coming and that was it right there like i really truly appreciate that so much and i to be honest with you i i honestly wasn't even aware about the yield farm so that's something that i'm gonna have to dive into um tomorrow just to like educate myself on it so yeah again i just really appreciate all the information that's being shared because as um postal was mentioned it's not just about the um reflection tokens which mind you those are great all by themselves but it goes one step deeper by doing the yield farming and um your alpha big bear that you just here oh my god so all right so i'm just gonna i'm gonna shut up and process all this because that was a lot that's that's really great stuff well yeah listen look at you could be you could have a bag okay you can bag whatever whichever whichever pulse loading protocol you're 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 interested in you can have a bag you can LP a certain percentage of that bag and get your 2x rewards on the LP position. And then you can keep a liquid position and you can port that between Pulse XV2 and the Pulse Lorian Farms, depending on which place is giving you the better yield. So it's all about, it's all about um, magnifying the return, right? So there, there's, there's a lot of different ways that you can gamify everything, but a lot of people are sleeping on the farms. And, you know, like I said, this is probably alpha that's going to, it's going to hurt me long term. But, but my philosophy is, is together we all win. And I think that the more people that are benefiting from what is being presented here is the long term benefits of that are like, it's, it's 10, a hundred fold. So, you know, the more people that are benefiting, the better off we are as a collective. So I'm, I'm happy to share that. I, I don't, I'm not a selfish person. I want to see everybody do well um, and, and, and get those gains. So happy to do it. Yeah, I really appreciate that so much. Um, I have started a small LP for Inc. X. I'm planning on doing more over the next week or two. But with this um, this uh, GDI launch that's coming tomorrow, like I'm gonna plan on doing a big LP to establish my position early, because, um, like I said, I want to establish a really big position in that early on and just accumulate as much passive PDI as possible. Because I took a position in PDI earlier on, and I thought to myself, well, you know. Once this pegs or whatever it's going to do, then that's what I'm going to have with this little bag. But now that I have the opportunity to earn even more passive income for PDI, like that's like yet another dream come true for me. So I'm just, oh, it's just so much. Like I'm just, I'm super excited. So again, just thank you so much for all the alpha that's being spread here. Like it's really appreciated. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the idea is that, you know, we keep, growing these farms and uh, the elixir token you know ui is partially ready anybody you know who cares to investigate the contract you know paste it on the scanner you can see that the governance token it is it is there and it, it manages you know uh you know our our uh lp our, our yield farm uh contract right 
And, uh, you know, imagine what we can do, the yield farm can do for these, all of these protocols in terms of strengthening the liquidity, um, you know, by providing different types of incentives, you know, different types of pairings. And as these yield farms grow and they capture more fees, and uh, these fees feed the LP network, obviously, right? And then people actually can vote, you know, to change allocation between these pools, introduce new pools, uh, remove pools that are not perhaps yielding as expected or tokens that, you know, lost interest of the market over time type of thing. And it, 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 we also add third party tokens to these farms, right? So it brings new eyes from other communities as well. Like there's always people chasing yields on these yield farms. There's people that, that that's their, their thing, right? So, so yeah, that's a, it's just, and you talked about important points. I, I'll, I'll just, just finish this one last point that like securing an early position, uh, that's, that's, that's the best thing to do, right? Cause once the best time to join a project, join a token, join a group, join a community, you know, it's when it's starting, you know, it's when the liquidity the smallest is it's it's when the token is the cheapest because that's when you secure the biggest bag you know so you secure the biggest position you become a shark a whale a dolphin and you know uh, the first few days is like was really when the rewards come pouring in and just that by itself like it will it compensates the initial investment i mean uh, reflux perfect example I think people, a lot of people, the people who joined like Reflux day one, they saw like, uh, I believe at a, you know, once it reached an all time high, I know I, for myself, I saw like probably like a 50 X on my bag. And that was just price appreciation of Reflux alone. So it was just ridiculous. And then obviously, you know, after such a big bump, it dumps, but what we saw, it's, it's, it's despite the price being down, the liquidity is pretty much just as strong, which is what we want to see. Go, go for it, yeah. Johnny Pulse. Uh, I'm, I'll just, I'll just jump in before Johnny Pulse does, but I'll, I'll, oh, yeah. I'll, go for I'll it. back up your statement, um, Pulse Lorian. Since since RFX launched, I have ROI'd on just my rewards, never mind price appreciation, but I have ROI'd simply on my PLS PLS rewards since RFX has launched. So that, that just is a testament to the power of the protocol. I think what a lot of people are missing is you see a lot of uh, reflections or what they're calling now is rewards or yield tokens uh, on, on, um, on Pulse Chain that they're going on these, you know, you get a, this percentage or this percentage on buy, this percentage on sell. So what I love about the fact that the, uh, of the Pulse Lorian ecosystem is the fact that usually the sell side percentage is heavier, which rewards the re, which resor, re, rewards the holders when the jeets are leaving the system, and also the fact that we have this accelerator contract. This is something new that I think a lot of people really don't understand. The accelerator is literally a contract. This is code, okay which is once it's renounced, it's renounced. This is code that literally is a benevolent whale. All it, it's given a percentage of supply. That percentage of, of supply does nothing but accrue and accumulate rewards in the given token, whether it be PLS, PLSX, HOA, ink, dye, or whatever, okay? those tokens are never ever leaving that contract. Think about that for a second. Those tokens are never ever leaving that contract. They will never ever see another buy or sell. They're gone, they're basically burnt. And, and what I love about that is that that, con that accelerated contract is a part of every protocol that Pulse Lorraine has launched. It's huge and uh, you know, Given what Paul Thorin just said, that just like I echo that sentiment 100%. So sorry for butting in. 
Um, Johnny Paul, no, go for it, bro. No, no problem. Yep. Yeah, I don't. I don't mean to change the subject, guys. Um, I just wanted to say congrats to everybody that that is going to get the airdrop of Jedi. I'm I'm super stoked. Um, and I also wanted to ask: Is Johnny speaking? Because I can't hear. Uh, yeah, I can hear him, and I can hear you as well. Yeah, I can hear you both. I'm going to drop down. It must be red. Okay, I don't know if it's on my end. It, it must not be. If everybody else could hear me. Um, yeah, I, you're yeah, good. Go for it, bro. Go okay. For it. Yeah, I, I just wanted to see if, like, later on in the future, I don't know if you guys already planned on it, since, um, Teddy Bear, would, would that be something in the future? Maybe, maybe doing something with Teddy Bear? Yeah, I mean, uh, if there's demand for it, uh, if the, the market likes it, and it's definitely a possibility. Um, obviously, you know, we have stuff on the pipeline. Um, right. It might take some time to get to it, but yeah, we, we can eventually get to it. It's just, we're, we're going case by case, you know. Uh, I we got have like, a bunch of list of like, things to do and launch and, and stuff like that. It's We'll get to it. I, I can see you guys are definitely busy. You guys are always constantly throwing out new contracts, and it's it's pretty it's pretty cool seeing you guys do this. Um, that'd be something I'd be really interested in. And also, I wanted to ask if um, on your farms, I I have a lot of PLS tied up in you know my LP pools. Um, would it be by chance adding? I don't know how you guys are doing that. I know that you said that there's going to be some type of voting with I believe Elixir. Correct. Yeah. So we have a UI, you know, partially ready, uh, you know, still to be implemented. It's just been like falling back in the pipeline just since it's like, you know, more interesting for us and in focusing and like expanding the community, launching like a GDI, then the whole governance aspect, which is usually more like the people who are really, really deep into the ecosystem and protocol actually value more, you know. Um, but yeah, it's definitely the contract is already there. Uh, if you look at the code, it already has the capability. It's a matter of implementing the UI, you know, the way it works. It's basically there's going to be proposals like remove farm X you know, or change allocation, change reward allocation for, I don't know, teddy bear farm to, uh, to, to be double the amount of rewards type of thing. And then people, based on their Elixir balance in their wallets, um, they're basically going to cast a vote, you know? And then, uh, yes or no. And then uh, once it reaches a particular block timestamp uh, for that proposal, uh, the function and the contract executes automatically, and it will change the reward allocation for that farm. Or it will remove a particular farm, or it will add a new farm, and so forth. And... Uh, yeah, and that uh, Alex Zero uh, also functions in, you know, a lot of our contracts for, you know, minor, like, admin type functions uh, play a governance role in terms of, you know, maybe, like, we want to increase the tax a little bit, the fee on one of our yield protocols. It can be done, but I think the, the way it is right now, it's, it's mostly working. It's perfect. Uh, yeah, I don't think we want to change that much. And and just a reminder for anybody who's coming in, all of these fees on our contracts, you know, they can never go above 5%. That's the max per the contract rules. If you look in, inside the code, there's a requirement that it's always, so it's not like we could ever increase the tax on, on these tokens. And reminder, uh, the, uh, I think the most powerful thing behind these protocols, it's, you know, it's, Obviously, the way they yield and the, the way there's an accelerator that does a buy and burn and stuff like that. But it's that these protocols will be out there forever. You know, they're immutable. No admin keys. LP is burned. It's decentralized. So these are true DeFi type of protocols, right? That's that's the type of stuff that we want to build in Pulse Chain. The code is there. Anybody can look into the code, see what the contract is doing, try to fork. And uh, we, what we were seeing as well as not anybody can really fork our code. Uh, credits to like the genius of our, our developer. It's not a code that's easily forked. Um, so, which also preserves, you know, uh, you know, all, all, all of what we're doing. 
we we see we see other projects trying to emulate similar stuff, but uh, they don't come close into um, what we're doing because our code is actually decentralized, um, and uh, we have an accelerator and everything else, and we're building this LP network, and we have yield farming. So uh, we, we we all see what's happening in the market, and a lot of these projects that try to emulate us. They're really not up to our standard, really, because it's, you know, it's centralized code. You know, they don't have a yield farm supporting it. They don't have an accelerator. You know, they might have a maybe bigger community or something like that. But um, the way we're expanding our network, it's, it's, I, I'm just really happy to see like, how all of this is evolving. Yep. Me too, me too. Um, would uh, a possibility be in the farms? Would there be a a PDI and teddy bear farm? So there's already a teddy bear farm. Uh, it's actually there's already one. Uh, I plan on adding. I was talking uh, on the background, you know, some OGs, and uh, talking to Honor. I was thinking of adding, like, definitely adding a PDI farm. Um, they're going to be a GDI farm, and I. I, this is just my personal preference, and I saw there's a lot of demand on the market for this new token, ZKZX. Uh, so I was thinking of adding a ZKZX farm for people who also want to explore, you know, like just bring third-party people into our ecosystem, more eyes. And uh, if anybody hasn't checked out the ZKZX protocol, it's very interesting what we're doing. I heard that was from the GoPulse team. Is, is it? Or is it some, from someone else? Yeah, it's from the GoPost team. So that's, that's why it's also very interesting to have it uh, on, our, on, our, on, our, on our front end, on our yield farm. Because it's, it's, it's going to be a... It's a it already is a ridiculously strong project, right? And it has a legit like use case, right? So it's basically a fork of Tornado Cash. So there's always going to be a demand for uh, privacy within the blockchain. Uh, and there's always going to be utility. And if you have not used yet ZKZX, uh, yeah, I recommend you checking it out. Uh, it's pretty, pretty, I, I liked it. That's cool. Yeah, any, anybody else wants to um, uh, share any thoughts, perspectives, uh, projects, uh, Pulse Chain, uh, Alpha? Uh, that hasn't spoken yet, or even if you already spoken, uh, feel free. So I was, uh, if nobody else wanted to hop up, I'm just gonna say, you know, the I think a lot of people under uh, undervalue. I don't know the correct word I'm looking for here, but they don't. They don't pay attention to liquidity pools enough or in farms enough. You know, I mean, the, the whole concept of Pulse Chain. I mean, I, I know this existed on Ethereum as Pulse Chain was being built out, but like the emphasis with Pulse Chain was decentralization and DeFi, you know, decentralized finance. And when I, before, before this bull run started, when I was on Ethereum, I didn't do any of the crap that I do today because not that I was scared of it, I just didn't have any knowledge of it. I didn't mess with liquidity farms, or excuse me, liquidity pools. They didn't mess with farms. Just bought coins and held them and hoped that they went up in price. But, you know, since we had two years of testnet to play around with liquidity pools and got very comfortable with it, I, I really feel like more people should understand what tools they have available on Pulse Chain itself, just, I mean, just amazing tools to just build wealth, you know, build yield, and a lot of people aren't taking advantage of that, and it's just like, you know, I get it, you know, a lot of people just, they want to buy something, and it goes up, but I don't keep, now, like, compared to 2020, 2021, I keep very little of anything in liquid, in any wallet, everything's in a farm, or a pool, and I know a lot of people don't like that concept because of, you know, they hear about impermanent loss and whatnot. It's paying off way better than just keeping the shit in my wallet, to be honest with you. It's, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing ride to just, you know, 
own keys, doing absolutely nothing, and just checking my wallet every so often and seeing, oh, well, I got, you know, another million pulls today. Great. That's awesome. You know, like, it's just, we have the tools to actually, you know, the, the, the ecosystem to just keep cycling itself through where you're earning just from holding. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to run a node, nothing. You just... Hold on these tokens, put them in a the liquidity pool, and let them do their job. And more people should take advantage of that. And these coins that are coming out early, getting into these pools early, I'm going to jump in the uh, Jedi when it launches tomorrow. I'm going to jump. I'm going to try to get a liquidity pool in as early as possible. That's just me, you know. And I'm going to try to forget about it. Not try to. I am going to just forget about it. Let it sit and let it do its thing. 